Welcome to the Maryland Retail Products Producer Program. This program is for producers and craft food entrepreneurs seeking to expand their retail product sales beyond the farm gate. This presentation is one component of the online training materials available on the University of Maryland Extension's Ag Marketing website. Additional training, educational materials, articles, and real-time educational opportunities can be found there. My name is Ginger Myers and I am the Marketing Specialist for Agriculture and Food Systems with the University of Maryland Extension. In this presentation, we're going to discuss retail standards for product labels. USDA has specific and FDA requirements for labels. All food containers must be labeled to display the following information. The name of the food, the contents, the name and location of the food business. This need not be the exact street, but must have the town and state that it's in. And then of course, a list of the ingredients by weight in descending uh, order. Labels like packaging serve to brand your product. They deliver important nutritional information and caution when products contain allergens. Customers do read labels and good labels sell product. There are two distinct label areas to find on packages. The principal panel, usually the front, is the first thing customers see. It usually has a product name, uh, photo, and that information we talked about that was required by USDA and FDA. Then there are informational side panels. This is where you often see a list of the ingredients, perhaps the business name and address, or nutritional information, perhaps cooking or serving directions could be there as well. So the principal display panel on the front, the informational display panel on the sides, and usually the rear of the um, product can have no label or the additional information site. Nutritional labeling. If you have more than 100 full-time employees or making more than 100,000 of any specific recipe in a year, you must file to make specific claims about nutritional value. And those nutritional facts must be on your package. Now, if you're a smaller producer, not necessary to, to uh, notify FDA for an exemption of less than 10,000 units per year per recipe. And an annual letter uh, can be sent to FDA if it's 10,000 to 100,000 units. Again, below these numbers, no notification is needed. Though you may voluntarily use nutritional fact panels, even if you are technically exempt. Nutritional content claims. Beware here. There are such things as express nutrient content, such as low sodium or contains 100 calories or the claim of implied nutrient content, that it's high in bran or high in fiber or healthy and contains um, three grams of fat. The other nutritional claim often is relative value, 50% less fat than say other chicken products or one third fewer calories than perhaps other, other chocolate chip cookies. I say beware here because to use any kind of nutritional content claim, you must have nutritional testing to back that up. You must have a, a test that from a certified laboratory that shows that it is low in sodium, where the calorie count is less than 100 per portion pack, that it's low in fiber, and if you use it in relative value to another product, you must have that in comparison to that product's nutrient claims as well. Perhaps if you're talking 50% less fat, fat content of your product listed beside the fat content of the reference food as well. There has in the last several years become new labels from what we had before and they're certainly different. This was driven by consumer request and demand to, to be able to know more about the food content and specific nutritional factors. Some of the changes are you'll see that there's larger bolder print for easier reading. The calories in large type, so they're easy to find. The nutritional values are based on updated daily values, and then certainly actual amounts declared. 
New is the added sugar content that we didn't see before. You may have had a total sugar content, but um, not the added content that, that's often overlooked in some products. Nutritional labeling certainly addresses what we call the big eight food allergens. Milk, egg, peanuts, tree nuts, soy, fish, shellfish, and wheat. There are 160 known allergens uh, created by food, but this big eight is what is predominant uh, in the population. We know now that four out of every 100 children in the United States have food allergies, and the most common is peanuts. So consumers are definitely looking for that on their food label. Again, in 2004, there was legislation passed that all labels must declare an allergen present. If a major food allergen is an ingredient or the food has a protein from that major food group, the big eight. It includes single ingredient foods. For example, a package of peanuts has to list food allergens of peanuts. Producers are to be vigilant using good manufacturing practices as a first defense against cross-contamination, rather than simply saying may contain on the label. Most do put that may contain on the label, but that will not mitigate the risk if your uh, manufacturing practices don't work diligently to separate um, your manufacturing out of those allergens or to list them. So where is the allergen notification? Again, remember we talked about using those side panels where the nutritional facts are. An example here is to list them right in the ingredient list. You'll see that the soy uh, is listed under the, the, the uh, less generic name here. And if you're using the chemical or the uh, approved food stuff name, you need to, to uh, make sure that it's put in the comments language. For instance, this first panel has whey. That's a milk product. Eggs um, don't need to be uh, in brackets because that's a standard known quantity and quality. The other way to, to list the ingredients where you're using the formulation uh, names, again, uh, when you look to the right of this slide, they've used the names without using the more common um, names of the product in, in the ingredient list. It says contains, and it lists all the four that are in there, wheat, milk, egg, and soy. Um, there is, uh, in, in a type size, there's no smaller than can be used for the list. Uh, that is, saying that if you list ingredients in one type font, you can't make your allergen fonts smaller. So does your package do this well? We've talked about this before, uh, the packaging in the previous presentation about size, shapes, colors, what it does uh, as far as containing the product protection and freshness, but your label often works with the other components here, such as sensory appeal, color and, and placement. It uh, differentiates from other products and also uh, can be an emotional fulfillment for the customer to see that you've got a, a well-designed package, an interesting label and a complete nutritional profile listed there as well. This is all important because of the five and five rule. The shopper will give you five seconds, about five feet from the, the shelf, to find and decide to purchase your product. Remember we said earlier that folks buy food with their eyes. This is one of those rules that really brings this up, that, that having an eye-catching packaging, well-labeled, will help get, drive customers to your product and make, help make you sell sales. So. Does your packaging and labeling sell your product? Look at it, have others look at it, give you good feedback. There are additional resources in this topic that you may want to look at that I've listed here, referring to a presentation that, that uh, was, was done, Developing Successful Retail Products. The University of Maryland Extension Food for Profit Program, which is a training for would-be food entrepreneurs, also has a labeling module link that you can uh, view and, re and review. 
Also, these are resources on labeling that are USDA um, and uh, UPC codes that you may want to consider having put on your label. So that, again, you can refer back to this. Uh, this presentation is on the website. You can review this slide. I want to thank you for joining uh, this presentation today and viewing it. Be sure to check back on this website for more training material and resources for successfully creating and marketing your products.